Hi guys, it's Nick here from Hidden Valley Bushcraft and today we're going to be doing a bit of a QA. and a and I've got my Q&A. &A. So the first one is from somebody calling themselves Winston Churchill. Is ethnobotany based around an ethnic group you have chosen? Basically the meaning of ethnobotany guys is botany, like any other, the, start, the study of plants, trees, their chemical composition and their components and the stuff that's inside of them. Ethno simply means human. If we were talking about something that's come to my area of, of living, okay, and uh, in the UK, if we're talking about a plant or something, an ornamental you put in your garden that's been around since the 70s, not really of interest to me. If it's something, there is a strong theory to suggest that we've used it for X, Y, and Z, a Y, and because, that's when it's interesting to me. Okay, so that's the study of trees, plants, flowers, their chemical composition and relationship to us as human. That's the ethno, the human part, botany. Okay. Right, next one, Elga Don Ram Rebo. Nick, another interesting video. And he was talking about the knots for tarps video we did. It's a good idea to use taut line hitches and to tension the tarp itself and certainly keep them dry. Would finishing those with a quick release work as well? Uh, appreciate your channel. Keep up the good work. Right, guys, if you feel you need to get away in a hurry, then yeah, go ahead and, and just put that simple loop on there uh, as you would with the finishing an event knot, which you'll see in that video, okay, that tops knot. Personally, I don't need to break down and disappear at a, a moment's notice anymore. For me, I'll take my time, I'll make my knots as strong as they can be and, and as efficient as they can be. It doesn't necessarily compromise it to make, make it quick releasing, but it could do. There's always an element there for someone else to pull that. Right, someone called Tarek Van. Again, knots, knots and four tarps videos. I would love to see the knots multiple times as you time them again, just so it can be driven into the mind. Okay, so he wants to see a little bit more. Trucker's hitch is faster, simpler, more effective, uses less rope and are useful for a bunch of other things. Why not use it? Well, much like everything in this life, guys, it comes down to personal preference. Excuse me, I'm absolutely roasting. The fundamentals are, the reason I don't use a trucker's hitch, okay, is because it's a trucker's hitch. It's for trucks. So what I mean by that is you can put up to three or four times your body weight into that. I'm 100 kilos of man. If I put four times my body weight between two small diameter trees for the sake of a ridge line, I'm putting like, 400 kilos worth of stress, okay, through relatively small diameter rope around those two small trees. The other thing is I know we are creatures of habit. So we tend to go and use the same couple of trees every time we go camping. All we'll end up doing is if we keep promoting truckers hitches for ridge lines, we will end up in a situation where we're just starting to damage tree crop that we don't have. Here in the UK, I'm really trying to promote us using, thinking outside the box and doing stuff that's a bit more conservation minded. So that's why I tend to use my version of a taut line hitch, uh, the figure of four and, and things like the Evenk, etc., or something like a um, two round turns and a half hitch because I'm, I'm spreading the weight across the rope. I'm gonna have to move away because this is absolutely roasted. I mean, it's nice to be warm, but, but try not to cook yourself. Okay, so next question. Prophylactic, nice name. My British surplus ruck has a shoulder strap that is hard as rock. Any idea why that would be and maybe how to re-soften it? I'm gonna assume that it's the, uh, the stuff that our heavy duty Bergens are made of. Now what generally sometimes tends to happen is they can get really jammed up, earth and muck and things like that build up, especially where it's kind of hard to clean. And that combination of being really cold then rewarming, then really cold, then rewarming, hot, cold, hot, cold. The material starts to suffer, basically. I'd put your Bergen in a bathtub full of warm water and I would just literally soak the whole thing through. I'd undo the straps completely, okay? And I'd get like a little, um, like a toothbrush and I'd clean out, I'd get in between all those little bits and pieces, start from scratch. Create love happy. Could you use all the charred bits of bread crust to start the next fire? Also, could you make char material from eggshells? I don't know if you can make char material from eggshells. I'm gonna go ahead and say I don't know the answer to that one. I would say you try it first and let me know in the comments box below. I'd love to see that. Reference your charred bits of bread. Guys, everything burns. If you can get things to char, okay, that is to say if you can get them to go black, anything that's already charred, 
generally will will start burning a lot faster than, than something that's not because that that pyrolization process has already uh, taken place it's already kind of in mid flow okay so um so yeah i'd say yeah you could use your your bread crust to start the next fire good shout mark's world thanks for posting the video nick okay and this one's referring to the seasonal affective disorder talking about good and bad weather i'd be interested in your favorite time to be out in the woods for me i'm relishing the return of freezing temperatures it means two things no mosquitoes biting flies or midges and the choice of a hot or cold drink i'm kind of a really big fan of spring when it's at its fullest there's so much to forage there's so much to engage with you've got that tree cover protecting you from the elements and that you know the kind of winds and things like that the smell of garlic in a british woodland is phenomenal and generally mozzies aren't really such an issue around that so yeah for me i'd say spring at kind of peak springtime is really good christopher dibbs has been watching not knots for tarps and again what is the benefit of using a figure of four over a rolling hitch it's much of a muchness we generally tend to pick about four or five knots in this life that you use for everything whether it's going to your hardware store and strapping something down to the roof or whether it's making a little running eye that tightens down on itself or something slippery and sliding it's personal preference if you want to use a rolling hitch crack on that's basically my answer to that it, it all just comes down to preference somebody called l croc best sleeping bag options video okay and their their question to me is that they've just got hold of a uh, modular system is there an insulative reason to turn the lightweight bag inside out and not yourself add extra ties outside the lightweight bag to continue using the liner inside you don't need to tie a liner in you just put a liner in there the lightweight bag attaches to the outer of uh, the inside of the heavy bag using the ties that's the only tie point that there is with that system to my knowledge angus freeman is this your main pack and do you have another bushcraft pack well angus i am just in the process of building a new pack because that carry more sf bag and i have been on quite a journey i'm quite emotionally tied to it and i'm realizing that it is well i've had it since 2007 and it gets used a lot so I want to retire that bag and use it for light duties. <laughs> I am looking at a number of options right now and a number of different brands which are offering some great stuff around the between the 40 to 60 litre mark and I'm just kind of exploring that as we speak. It's not that I don't want to give anything away, it's just I'm, I'm not, I haven't nailed it down just yet. It's coming though. Oh Stella, Bushcraft Gear. Okay, and this was the bag packing one again. Where did the Kelly Kettle go? So the Kelly Kettle was in a separate side pouch. If you go back in that video and you look, it was in its own side pouch. What I have is a series of the side pouches that go on the Carry More SF pack. I've probably got about eight to 10 of those pouches. Now, depending on what I'm doing, okay, remember this video is generic bag packing. If I'm going out with a client and I'm just gonna be out for one night and coming back and, and you know, kind of the magic of the Kelly kettle might need to be applied because we're gonna be going somewhere where having a fire is not quite permitted, but you want that feeling, you want that kind of the, the, the smell of wood smoke and you want that kind of real camping experience rather than just maybe using gas, Kelly kettle's gonna come with. And all I do is unzip one side pouch, zip on the other one. So in the video, I just pushed it to one side and, and carried on building the pack in a much more applicable for, for almost everyone around the world manner. You can pick and choose how you choose to do it. It's just the system in that video that I'm trying to show you. Mark Bow. Okay, and again, we're back to the backpacking one at the moment. Hi, I'm just beginning my bushcrafting hobby as I'm still in the acquisition stage. Mark, we're all constantly in the acquisition stage. That's the problem with this stuff. There's so much amazing kit out there. Not that I'm a complete kit pest, but I, I love reusing elements of my old life and then now starting to look around and think oh actually there's some really good stuff out there as well I just can't afford it half the time. One thing that caught my attention is your placement of shelter items. I am understanding that your shelter should be the third easiest item to access. One being fluids, two being first aid, three being a shelter. Well Mark in this in this occasion um, that particular 45 litre pack it is possible for me to reach up and round and access fluid from the side pouches okay which gives me that amazing option so i've got fluid accessible at the top of both side pouches good to go i've also got the option if i don't want to do the water bottles of having the camel back straight in or i could do away with the camel back and make more room in the main body 
the whole thing is adaptable. I would say the first thing in your top flap is going to be, and think about the word shelter, is going to be your waterproofs or something you could just put straight on. So, so warm clothing because you've gone static. Okay, you want to protect yourself from the elements. And then the next thing inside there is going to be a tent, a tarp, something like that. That's in the main body. So it's actually possible to have both. Is my understanding wrong? No. Or is this understanding change on location or perhaps seasonal change? I'm in Canada and just about 100 kilometers from the Rocky Mountains for a reference point. Yeah, so if I was in the Rocky Mountains, I would want access to fluids. I would want access to gear that's gonna protect me from the elements quickly. And, and, and you can do all that with, with a setup, something like a 45 liter main body and two side pouches. Okay, and you can have, you can have the best of both. It is achievable. This person is asking a question about the UK top 10 poisonous plants. This could save your life video I did a little while ago. And this one's from someone called Gone Fishing. What about puffballs? Are they dangerous or is it just a myth? Not meaning the mushrooms, but the small brown things you find which puff out some kind of powdery like substance. Right. Okay, Gone Fishing. They are the same thing. What generally tends to happen, okay, so as a puffball, they come up out of the ground, okay, and they tend to look like a small golf ball on a, on a thick white tee. That's kind of how they look to me when I, I start finding them here in the woodland. In their early phase, okay, they're about this big. Now, there's different versions. In that family, there are different subspecies and you can get great big football sized things, okay, but the ones I tend to find here are quite small. They basically look like a light bulb, like a white, polystyrene fleshy light bulb. That's how they start. Now at that point, that's when I'd be looking to cut around the base, cultivate these things, have a little look inside, cut all the way through. And if I just see that they are completely white and fleshy all the way throughout, there's no presence of any yellow and the top hasn't started to open up and create spores, that's when I'm gonna throw it in the pan and have it for breakfast. Later in the season, as these things start to mature, you'll get a, a yellow spore print will start to happen in the inside here, okay, and then these yellow uh, spores will start to appear and then the whole thing will turn brown and then before you know it, it'll start to open up like a little star in the top and as you knock it, it'll start to puff out thousands upon thousands of these little spores and that's how it propagates itself. So they are in fact the same thing. This one's referenced the video we did on best camping kettles 2021. So the question we've got, Finlay, mm. Could charcoal briquettes be used in a Kelly kettle? Oh, you... I want a chocolate hobnob. <laughs> I want a chocolate hobnob. You can have a jammy dodger. Two jammy dodgers. The trade-off. No, I don't want for these. Honestly, I don't know because I normally just use pine needles and sticks and twigs like the rest of us. Um, give it a go. Let me know in the comments box below. I, I learn a lot from you guys at home. I learn a lot from the comments box myself. It's always great to see the level of competence in, in our viewers. Okay, this is from Fit Sim. Looks like Cap Captain Chris. Hi Nick. A lot of people tend to split, split their kit up for different hikes or tasks, which is great working from home. However, if we were to have a, to bug out for an indefinite time or for whatever reason, and given that the most outdoor enthusiasts either drive to a location, then carry their pack about 100 foot from the car, my question is, what's your Four Seasons pack? And what would it look like and how far would you carry it? Check out the video we did on how to pack a bag, okay? That one was called bag packing, yeah. So check that video out. Pretty much everything that goes in there is gonna be what's on my back if I was gonna go spend anything from three to weeks on end. Astanga Yoga London. Hi Nick, what are your thoughts on what you sleep on as important as what you sleep in? I've slept in lovely warm bags but still frozen because I skimped on a good mat. Now I always go for a good mat and a thinner bag. This is an age old classic. What you're trying to do is put a good stop, okay, insulative stop in that cold effect that's happening from the forest floor being able to steal uh, the warmth from your body, okay? So we, we, we lose heat in a number of different ways. Think about convection, conduction, radiation, transpiration. Whether you like it or not, we're losing heat. And so the, one of the best things we can do is try to get ourselves up off the floor or to put something down which creates a stop in, in that from happening. So I always use a Gore-Tex bivy bag. I always generally tend to use, especially in the winter, 
a good heavy duty bag which is capable of of the worst that the British weather can throw at me here in the British Isles anyway coupled with either a classic kind of a, a nice thick military style foam mat being a wider chap I've just bought myself a Berghaus XL uh, which is 63 centimeters wide because most sleep mats generally tend to be 51 centimeters wide which kind of comes to the inside of my shoulders here and so I, I, I end up with that classic cold spot and so yeah very good point great great question what about buffalo systems never been able to afford the sleep system but I own a special six I can regularly suppose it would knock everything into a cocked hat I actually have something called a tracker bed which a dear friend of mine gave me and it basically is pretty much a lightweight canvas outer with a, a buffalo same stuff micro micro fleece microfiber fleece inner except it's in a blanket and it clips together because it's designed to go around one of those fishing beds that is phenomenal would I use it on its own no that answers your question I guess buffalo uh, buffalo top is, is a really really good thing and you could easily sleep with the right type of fire inside your buffalo on, on a raised bed you'd probably get away with it fine I've not used the sleep system itself but I know enough about that tracker bed to know that they're very good but I probably wouldn't just use it just on its own here in the UK I'd want I'd want something else to go with that what else we got here what about condensation Michael Zimmerman who's talking about when we did our tarps into tents two setups and I showed turning a DD Hammocks XL tarp into a, a, a little kind of uh, tent. Yeah, you do get condensation buildup. That's why a regular real tent has an inner and an outer. And even then you can still get a buildup on the inside of the tent. The key to that is to have enough airflow moving through that you're not bleeding heat, but that that airflow is, is flowing around the tent and you're not completely sealed up in there 100%. That is always going to cause condensation uh, without doubt. On the bushcraft tools video in this video i show a carabiner laced into the shoulder strap of my bag interested to, to know what the reason is and if that's something you can learn from guys where that kind of comes in handy for me is usually when i'm doing something and i get i get caught out with something unexpected and it might be that i need to make a trucker's hitch or something like that to move a piece of timber or a small diameter tree here in the woodland that's got hung up so what I can do to reduce the amount of friction through that knot is I can use a carabiner to make it run smoother, uh, to be able to put more application of my body weight through and increase my capacity to be able to move a larger piece of timber. But yeah, it's just generally a, just a, a handy bit of kit to have. You'd rather have one than not. They don't really weigh much. And, and a great place to put these things is just through here on either strap. I genuinely carry two on one of my other kits where I'm using, I'm, I'm generally more in a lightweight role and I'm using my hammock. Okay, so those two carabiners come off. They then become the two carabiners, which uh, with a bit of jungle paracord uh, knotted every couple of inches. Um, that's all for this week. Until next week when there's going to be a whole video on, that's right, you'll have to find out. Goodbye to the camera. He says bye-bye. Bye everyone.